everyone, welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever wanted to claim your magnificence, then do we have the Integrity Advantage show for you. Today I'll be talking with Kelly Casso, lawyer turned master life coach, the CEO of the Ford Institute, and the author of a beautiful new book on transforming your life, The Integrity Advantage. And that's just what I want to talk with her about today, about stepping into your truth, loving your life, and claiming your magnificence. That plus we'll talk about the miracle of USC, wearing towels <laughs> over our heads, optimist and horse manure, the importance of a freedom t-shirt, what we can all learn from Auntie Mame, and <laughs> what in the world Julia Roberts and the runaway bride have to do with anything. There you go. Woohoo! You know my life. I love it. <laughs> so welcome to the show, Kelly. Are you ready to shine? Absolutely. Let's have some fun. I told you we'd have some fun it's today. Pretty fun. All right. So before we dive right into things, I apologize. I want to go back to your earliest years. Were you always a perfectionist? Yes. Yes. I think I came out of the womb that way. I really do. Yes. Always. I mean, I remember as a child doing so much homework at night, like, and by the time I was, you know, eight years, I always had to have my math homework in first and it always had to be perfect. It was just, I must have been breastfed on perfection. <laughs> oh, no. I, there's some benefit to it and, and it, it got you somewhere. You went through an Ivy League school. Um, you, you went to be, on to become an attorney. Did you want to become an attorney? You know what? I never, like I have three daughters now or in their 20s. And I don't think back then anyone, and it was a different consciousness, but no one said, what are your dreams? What are your desires? What is your soul longing to, you know, contribute to the earth? And so the perfectionist, you mm -hmm. know, I had a brother who was never going to go to med school. So I said, okay, I'll go to law school. You know, I'll be the smart one in the family. And so it just was like, I remember senior year of college, like I didn't even, I was like, what should I be doing? Because I did live from this checklist of life. So, you know, it was Ivy League school, you know, a master's degree. And so for me, it was law. So you were shooting all over yourself. I was shooting all over myself. <laughs> oh no. So after you become an attorney, you meet this great, great guy, uh, uh, at least on paper, and loaded question, but did you know it was love at first sight? No, I knew it wasn't. I, I will say the thing that I did, you know, see in my husband is he was one that saw the cup half full, and I had never been by that. Mm -hmm. I had never lived with anyone who kind of lived in the possibility and was like, go, try it, do it, you know, supportive. So you know, at the beginning, there was that, that I was so, because in my whole life was, what do you need to do next? Not like, oh, looking at the cup half full. It was always, what can I do next that'll fill the cup and make me perfect? And so I found that very inspiring. But I knew on my wedding day, which goes to the towel over my head, that I was I was not, I was again going by my checklist, you know, 27, 28, time to get married, time to have kids, white picket fence dream. And so again, it was just like, okay, this is what's supposed to happen at this point. So I stepped over my truth or I tried to hide my truth, but I knew it wasn't what it should be. It sounds like from the beginning, the power dynamic was off. I don't know if I would call it that. I made every decision by my head. I never connected to my heart. And so to me, it made sense because I was always making decisions that made sense on this like strategy of life. It was like a chessboard. Okay, now I have to move here. Now I have to move here. Now I have to move here. And so you moved into marriage with the towel over your head, so to speak, but you knew if you remove that towel, you are out of, and that's what the point of this whole book is, right. integrity with yourself. I was out of integrity. Absolutely. I knew that I was stepping over my truth to, you know, achieve what I thought I should be achieving. And so I knew, and, and that was the thing. That's what I realized. And when I got a divorce, you know, people said, oh, wow. 
you know, it's like I, my original book was going to be called The Divorce Diet. Like, oh, my God, you look so great. What happened? And I go, I got a divorce. But then I realized it wasn't the divorce that made, you know, me look better or get my, you know, a swing back in my step. It was being out of integrity that just whittled away at any self of, sense of self, self-worth, self-esteem, self-expression I had. And that was the aha for me. I'm working, I work with a lot of coaching clients and I've got one or two going through some serious challenges right now where they're a little bit, it's a polite way to put it, potentially out of integrity right. and, and doing everything I can. If you had, if you had the ability to go back to you on wedding day, is there anything that you could have said to yourself to help you get back into alignment? Um, is there anything just, I think what I would say to myself now and what I do, don't compromise yourself. Like, at now in my 50s i get that there's just no longer there's no more time to compromise play small you're never going to be happy if you are settling biting your tongue swallowing your integrity swallowing your truth trying to get affirmation from other people it's just you're never going to be happy and so that's that's why i love this concept of integrity because it's really living from the inside out what is it's not about perfection it's about what's perfect for you what's right for you and it's so much it's so freeing it there's an important word that comes up with this and thank you so much for sharing that i'm, I'm like wanting to go woohoo and, and 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 wanting people to really hear this because it's a completely different way of living it implies, though, that we need well, we need several things. First, we're going to get to your guidance system, but we also need the T word, and that, in this case, is trust, and that is huge. What does that mean? Well, for me, and when I started, you know, coaching and leading groups, it was just amazing to me how little people trust themselves, and it, and it shouldn't have been because I was one of those people looking to the outer world for my answers, like what color should I wear? Well. You don't look good in orange, so don't wear orange, but okay, I'll wear orange. You know, so I think I was amazed by how little people trusted themselves. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the outer world is always reflecting back what I need to look at in myself. So for me, trust was a huge thing because being in a relationship, and this goes to the concept of projection and shadow work, but you know, the world, and I'm very much on befriending the universe and using the universe as your biggest mirror. And so the universe, I really see it as the most benevolent partner and teacher. And it's always sending you people to help show you the parts of yourself that you've disowned, that you're not owning and you're not having access to. So for me, trust was a huge thing because I called forth a relationship that was you know, so full of trust issues. And I could look and go, oh my God, you're so untrustworthy. But then I had to look at the three fingers back at me. And I realized that I was brought up in a family where I was told you can't trust anybody. You can't trust anybody. You can't trust anybody. So then I started living off of this checklist in life. So for me, this whole thing of taking this U-turn back to myself and learning to trust what's in here. And as well as this relationship with the universe has been the most um, meaningful relationship that I've had. And, and just looking how I called forth a relationship so I could heal my own trustworthy issues. And that has been the most important thing in myself because now I do walk around in unison trusting myself trusting the universe, trusting if something's happening, it might not be good, but it's happening for my evolution, for me to learn. Thank you. How did you start diving in on the inside so you can hear it? One of the things that I call it lately is KEGO versus K Heart Radio. How did you start listening to K Heart and being able to start trusting yourself? Well, I, my mentor was a woman named Debbie Ford. 
who one of the tenets of her work is all the answers are inside of you. And honestly, you know, I was one of those people, you know, what's the degree look like? You know, what car are you driving? What's that? I mean, I was out or referred everything from the outside, you know, and that's why I, everyone thought my life was amazing because on paper or in a picture, it would have looked terrific or people would have coveted that, but I wasn't happy. And I kept looking for that something more. And I thought, something's really wrong with me. Like mm -hmm. on paper, I've got it all. And I am so unhappy. Like, do I need to go like really have something, you know, go on medication? Not that anything's wrong with that. Or, or you know what I'm saying? Like something is really off because there was just nothing, but it was that stepping over my truth that made me so unhappy. So to try to start looking inside, what do I want to do? Who do I want to be around? What's my answer? What's going to make me happy? It is a muscle. The muscle of self-trust, like any other muscle, has to be reinforced, reinforced, reinforced. And so putting myself in a community where everyone, with a teacher, who wouldn't give me any answers, it was like, you know where to go. And a community of people who always tell you, go back and look inside. And so now I started getting that, that it was inside of me. And mm -hmm. that has been a defining, you know, transformation in my life. Woohoo! What flipped the switch that got you to go to an event with Debbie Ford? I honest, I had another business at the time. It was called Go Goddess, yep. and it was a game for women. And it was, I had a goddess group at the time. And I'm always one of these people I want to share with other people what works really well in my life. So this goddess group we had we would come together, a circle of women, and we would just be real and talk about issues. And we didn't necessarily have to solve them, but we had to discuss them. And just being authentic, especially at a time where, you know, I had three young children and I was a wife and, you know, I had all these other hats I was wearing and just that connection with my girlfriends in a really authentic space, you know, I kind of put it aside. And so two other of the women and I created a game to give other women a venue to come together like we came together. And it was around 2000 and we, it was just the right thing at the right time. And we were in People magazine and people were having Go Goddess parties and they were covered in InStyle and we were in Oprah and, you know, we were all over the place. And then people would call us and say, can you start doing workshops and luncheons and retreats? And even though I might make a really good girlfriend, I was not trained to hold people through transformation or through really heavy issues. Mm -hmm. And so at the time, life coaching was just in vogue and I wanted to be in integrity. And I asked around, I said, what's the best life coaching training? And everyone said the Ford Institute. So I just jumped in. And of course, again, that's the universe. You know, I think I'm doing it for mm -hmm. my business, but of course, it was for me and, you know, I would have never, in a million years, I would have never written this script and I can't imagine a more fuller life. Beautiful. So she, she has a process or had a process Go called ahead. the shadow process. Which we what still can, deliver. What can you tell us about it? So the shadow is the parts of ourselves that we disown we don't see, we don't like, we find unacceptable if we're talking yeah. about negative shadows. But people also, you know, have light shadows. So we can get to that. But the negative, the part of ourselves that we don't want to be. I don't want you to know that I'm stupid. I don't want to be, you know, lazy. I don't want to be selfish. All these parts of ourselves that we don't want to be. And shadow work, as is the word integrity, it is based on this concept of wholeness. We are born whole and complete. And as a result of situations that happen to us and the environment that we brought up in, we decide, I can't be that. It's bad to be that. God forbid I should be that like my mother or father. And we start whittling away at the qualities of ourselves as well as our emotions. Like, I can't be angry. I can't be fearful. I have to be happy, happy, happy. And so we start whittling away at our wholeness. Mm -hmm. And we lose access to those qualities. So shadow, and it's not only the dark. A lot of people were told, don't be too big for your britches, or don't take too much space, or, you know, 
it's not good for you to stand out in a crowd. So they whittle away at their positive qualities, their magnificence, their charisma, their talent, their sexiness. You know, we whittle it all away, light and dark. So the shadow process is this, it's amazingly choreographed weekend workshop that explains all these concepts and it it's like this roller coaster ride from the dark to the light and what it is not only is it and, and now I lead it I have the honor of leading it along with my team is it is um it's experiential because you and I know like you know I can read lots of books and and I can know something up there but it's about feeling it inside of me and yeah. so it's experience after experience after experience. And, you know, we start out in the dark and then we do a release and learning and we have exercise after exercise and it ends, you know, forgiveness is that hallway from the past to the present so we can create the future. And then we go into the light and it's just a beautifully choreographed weekend of owning all of who you are and just feeling whole. And so it always amazes me. I'm always stunned. I am stunned by the safety we create in a room where mm -hmm. people can just be authentic and just like leave all the stuff they've been so ashamed of or just say, this is who I am. And the release you see, and that's why you end up wearing a shirt that says freedom when you get to a pivotal moment of your life and you're like, okay, God, I am ready. No more compromising, no more settling. This is who I am. Woohoo! So let's go from there and let's talk about today how we can bring people into the light. And I'm wondering what if you can tell us about this line from Ralph Waldo Emerson, who you are speaks so loudly, I can't hear what you're saying. Well, when you start owning all of who you are and you start living at a certain level of wholeness mm -hmm. you can i mean we all feel it when someone walks in the room because we're always communicating who we are we're always communicating um how we feel about ourselves honestly so when you walk in a room are you walk in a room looking at the floor or are you walking around looking at who you, you know, looking up, looking out. I mean, you and I know and that, you know, what we do as coaches and as leaders is we can, if we hold ourselves at our highest, we can hold other people and we can just presence that for people because we come in feeling good about ourselves, feeling confident, and we just radiate that level of wholeness, fierceness, confidence, safety, and people feel it. When you're good with yourself, you can be good with others. It's like when you own your light, you can hold a space for others to shine their light. There's none of this compare. I mean, there is because we're human, but that's what I love about living an integrity guided life, being able to just be me. And, and integrity is my definition of integrity. It's not only about wholeness. That's one part of it. But it's also, it's living, you know, owning all of who you are and living in alignment with your deepest groups, truths and grandest desires. And when you're living your grandest desire, you can hold that for other people. When you're living in your truth, you only want to be around people who live in their truth so they can have that connection. And so when you're good with you, you send off an energy and you're just like, yes, go, go for it. Like, yes, you don't have to be at the front of the room. You're just applauding and holding other people. So let's talk about that. And let's talk about taking back your power. Actually, first, let's talk about the ultimate selfie device, the I am. The I am. So, you know, when you're going along, writing your book, and you like come up with like, oh my God, like the universe is great. So I realized so those enlightenment is about the I am. What is wholeness? I am. You know, I am that, I am that. I am that, I am that. I am you. You know, everything I see in you, everything I see in the collective is with me. And that's how we create connection. That's how we create learning. And so when I went to, you know, and, and our integrity is inside of us. 
And so everything you need, all your answers are inside of you. And so when I came up with this idea, this integrity alignment monitor, because I'm always like, we need to go in and check, you know, what's my answer? You know, what is it? What do I want to do in this moment? Who do I want to be? You know, do I want to answer that cell phone call or not? Do I want to sit home and watch Hallmark movies or do I want to go out? You know, if you know everything is inside of you and you're always say getting, you know, if you're a vibrational being, everything you do either mm-hmm. raises your vibration or not, every person you're with. And so the internal, the integrity alignment monitor is about going, you know, taking that U-turn back to yourself and saying and asking yourself, what do I need? And that builds that me- that muscle of self-trust because you start, what do I need? What's the love that I need? What do I need to do for me in this moment? Instead of just saying, yes, 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 yes to everybody. And, you know, and so the I am device, it really is the greatest selfie monitor because it's getting to know yourself and honor yourself and taking responsibility for yourself then you don't have to be the victim of everybody else. Such a powerful statement. Thank you for sharing on that. That is such a powerful statement. I want to come back to this because if you get nothing else, if you get this, if you truly get this and take this away from today, I think it changes everything. What do I need? What is the love that I need? What do I need in this moment? Literally, and especially you know, you've written books. I wrote, you know, I wrote this book and especially that because I really wanted this book to be, you know, it was my highest. I wanted to be, you know, divinely driven. I wanted to have the highest vibration in it. And I literally, I I say, I put myself on the self-love diet because everything, you know, I didn't want to be, I wasn't in relationship. I didn't want to date. I didn't want to do anything because at any moment I wanted to be able to say, instead of obligation, And and of course, we all have them. But for the most part, saying, what do I need? What is in my highest in this moment? And at first, because it's not a natural in the book, I have the integrity protection plan because homeland security starts at home, you know, structures to put in place. So, you know, even saying, okay, not answering. If someone asked me a question, I would just say, let me get back to you in 24 hours and just creating the space. So that, you know, I'll get back to you tomorrow at three. So for me to, because I really am, to me, every choice matters. It all, you know, and so I never want to be the victim of my choices Mm -hmm. because then you feel like the victim of life. So I make every choice from a very conscious level, not just on automatic pilot, so that I'm never going like, oh, crap, do I have to do that? And feeling like the victim. So I, if I make the choice and say yes, then I stand in responsibility and I bring my whole self to it. Otherwise, I say I can't. And that was also something I probably didn't do before because I wanted to be the nice girl, the one who could do everything for everyone. Which means you're not doing anything for yourself. Exactly, because when you take too much responsibility for others, you're not taking enough for yourself. <laughs> So let's talk about that line. Every choice matters because a lot of people are frozen in inaction when faced with these decisions. So how do we overcome that and the fear that, okay, she's saying everything matters, which means, oh, crap. Yeah. Well, so I have a lot of people, I mean, you you know, I coach a lot of people and this is a lot in shadow work. And when somebody doesn't make can't make a decision, can't make a choice. It's because there is something under there. And it's usually some fear, some shadow, like God forbid, I should make a choice. So because if I take an act, if I make a choice, I might fail. And it's fear of failure that keep most people in this. Oh, I can't, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do because they're getting something. Anytime there's a pattern of behavior, they are getting something from it. And even though there's a cost to it, and it might sound counterintuitive, them not making a decision or having this pattern of being wishy-washy, it's because underneath it is a fear. And so what I would say to them is to really get how that fear is keeping you frozen. And it is a shadow, and I would suggest they do some shadow work around it. And then to knowing that 
So when I say every choice matters, what I am saying is, and it's not about perfect choices. It's about what serves your vibration. So it's make yeah. conscious choices. Like I might decide to go out tonight and, you know, I, I mean, generally, like I like to eat healthy, but maybe I'm going to decide, you know what? I don't, it's Halloween. Today's Halloween. I don't know when this airs, but you know, I'm going to have a Snickers bar because I have a Snickers bar and I can have a Snickers bar. But I'm making, I'm doing it from a conscious level instead of, and so that I don't beat myself up tomorrow. So it's not about being quote unquote perfect. It's just, it's about choosing consciously because that's it. Transformation happens by bringing a different level of consciousness to a moment. Woohoo! So on that note, I want to talk about somebody who I think brought this presencing, brought this conscious decision making, and brought faith to the table for an incredibly positive outcome, your daughter Ryan and applying to USC. Yeah, that's a great story. So my daughter Ryan was, well, obviously in senior year, and she grew up you know, in this conversation, she had a mother in this conversation and her sisters had, she had two older sisters and they had left the nest two years earlier. So we had two years of a long time. And this was when I was just get really started working all while well, I'd been working all the time, but her and I were on this conversation. So Ryan on paper, she did not look like someone who should get into the BFA program at USC. It was a very selective program you know, it's the Bachelor of Fine Arts. It's for people who had all these long resumes of all the school plays and, you know, community theater they did. Ryan was never in a play in her life. She loved watching TV and stories. So I think she used to like go into the TV. And grade wise, she was not a candidate for a top school like USC. And so that program had 16 people, eight women and eight men or girls or boys, whatever you want to say. So now you have thousands of people applying for eight spots. Ryan, the summer before, went to the program at USC, went to a theater program, a summer program. She decided this is what she was going to do. She knew it in every fiber of her body. So she applied to four colleges. Mm -hmm. And and so one by one, they would, she got like into two of them. And then her number two school she got rejected, like, and she still hadn't heard from USC. So she calls me crying. I got rejected. I was out for the evening. I drive home. And in my mind, I'm thinking, oh my God, if she wouldn't, didn't get into her second school, there's no way she's getting into USC. Not happening. And, or it might not happen. And it wasn't about the school. Ryan had such a knowing inside of her. This is where I belong. That that's, I was more afraid of her losing her faith, something happening and her losing that internal knowing or that trust in that internal knowing. And she was still young. So, you know, she's learned other tools by now. So for an absolute week, Ryan and I were the only two in the house and we literally couldn't talk because we knew all the two of us were thinking was of that letter mm -hmm. and of, you know, I would say to her, well, you know, you can always go and then apply. And she'd look at me and she'd go, I will not talk about a plan B. This is the only plan. And at night, I'd see her. I remember one night I was on the phone with Debbie Ford and I was like crying. She's going to bed in her USC t-shirt. I'm dying. Like, oh, I'm so scared as a mother because you're like, oh, you only want to protect your children and have that faith. She wouldn't, we literally didn't speak because she would not allow any negative vibration or conversation into that knowing. And Lord knows on April 1st, which was her, is her birthday, I'm on the call with a coaching client and I hear a scream because you know they all come home from school to check the mail when they're getting the college acceptance. Oh, yeah. And she's on the stairs crying with the big letter and I just, we both are hysterically crying and she got in. And it was really, for me, a lesson in faith. When you don't, when you just are in that knowing or know something is right, and you don't allow any negativity into your spectrum, 
and you just stay so strong, we can, we are manifestors and that's what people have to get. And we do know, we have a sense of knowing. And that's when I stepped over my integrity because I did have a sense of knowing, you know, like on my wedding day. And, but she knew with every fiber of her being and the trajectory of her life in that moment changed for so many reasons, not only the whole USC living in LA, but just that connection she has, it's amazing. You know, no greater friend. Woohoo! Yeah. So let's talk about how we get, how we plug into that as well. And one of the things we have to do is bust our own BS, your words. Yes. And, and so what does Julia Roberts and the Runaway Bride have to do with anything? So the Runaway Bride was, it was me. <laughs> I mean, I, I love my Julia Roberts, but so I use that. I use the, the Runaway Bride. I use Julia Roberts a lot in my work. Um, but one of the rings, so the runaway bride, two, th two, um, two analogies for runaway bride is one is so many people are outer referred, right? You know, what should I be wearing? And I say, anytime we're trying to keep up, it comes from a place of lack. Mm -hmm. So you remember the part with the eggs where she oh, yeah. didn't even she know what whatever. eggs. And so that's what it is. It's like sitting. So when we talk about the integrity alignment monitor, it's mm -hmm. going back to that scene with the eggs where she has the omelet, the eggs, Benedict, the poach. She tries them all and goes, I like poach. So that's the integrity alignment monitor kind of thing. Like, what do you like going back inside the runaway by and busting your own BS is as you go through this process of um, getting into integrity and kind of getting you know, getting radically honest with yourself and kind of shedding away all the layers. One of the things you have to, we all have our favorite excuses. We all have our BS and we come to, um, we come to believe our own BS. Most people believe their excuses are the facts. They are facts. And, and most people will tell you something and then they'll try to actually, you know, they're very righteous about their excuses. So now I'm going to prove to you why me not being in my greatness or going for my dreams is actually true. So back after I got divorced, you know, I always said that I wanted to get married again, right? Or I wanted to have another relationship. But in our work, anytime there's a discrepancy between what you say you want and mm -hmm. what you're manifesting, if there's a discrepancy there, then there's something probably in your unconscious that is more powerful than what you're saying you actually want. That unconscious commitment is more powerful than your conscious commitment. So if I'm sitting there going, oh, I want to get married, I want to get married, I want to get married, and I am not manifesting a relationship, I needed to look what is underneath that. Now, when we talk about busting our own BS, I would say, oh, I'm not in a relationship. I work, you know, I used to work and lead workshops at night and classes. So I was a single mother of three kids and I used to work. Now, no one was going to say to me, oh, you're full of it, because look what I did. I was an amazing mother. I had to be a single mother. I was a single mother, and I helped, I helped people at night. I was always teaching, helping people transform. No one was going to say, wow, Kelly, that's an excuse. And so not only did I enroll everybody else in that, like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm working so hard and I'm such a great mom, I enrolled myself. I believed my own BS. But when I looked underneath, I realized that I had an unconscious commitment to safety and it was very much like Julia Roberts. I would get, I always was, I was creating, I had relationships, but they were none that I would ever commit to. They all had like a four light, a four, four month span, six month span. And so I would be dating men that I know I would never end up, you know, marrying or having some sort of a committed relationship with. And I really got that. Again, it was my commitment to safety, and there was a belief that I had that love wasn't safe and relationships wasn't safe and that I would be hurt. So I kept, you know, like her, running away from the relationships. How did you, once you uncovered that, once you discovered it and had that moment that you get where the patterning is, what did you do to be able to, sh to switch that? 
So once you uncover the unconscious commitment, and I get that, you know, I had my commitment is to safety. I looked and I said, okay, because you don't want to, you don't want to make that commitment wrong because it served me. So our, you know, you bring, you want to bring love to everything. So you want to bring love to the parts of yourself you don't like. You want to bring love, you know, seeds um, of change don't grow in a field of hate. So you want to plant and love. So we bring love to our fear. We bring love to all the different parts of ourselves that we disown, like our selfish self or our stupid self. It's about bringing love so you can embrace it and become whole. So with this once, so I saw how did it save, did my commitment to safety serve me? Yes, it did. Mm -hmm. Could I, and could I see it play out? Did it also have a cost? Yes, it did. So once you bring an unconscious commitment conscious, because if you're you were manifesting your unconscious commitment, the good news is you can manifest your conscious commitment. If you and so it's about taking an unconscious disempowering commitment, yep. making it conscious and replacing it, you know, like planting now and say, I am safe to love. I am safe to love. And if anything, I'll be a much happier when I do love. And so getting that I am safe. And of course, all that other work I was doing on strengthening my muscle of self-trust also reinforced that I could be discerning, that I wasn't just going to let, you know, I wasn't going to step over my truth anymore. I wasn't going to ignore the red flags just because, you know, it was on my to-do list. So between the self-trust and really getting I am safe, doesn't mean I'm not going to be hurt, but I am safe. And that was huge for me. And Thank that you. allowed me to open my heart. Going on the self-love side of things, I wasn't going to go there, but it seems important. A lot of people have, I've, I've certainly had my share in the past, self-sabotage. But not only do we self-sabotage ourselves, then we get down on ourselves yeah. for self-sabotaging yeah. ourselves. And self-love is blown completely out the window. Yes. Yes. That, that was my, the whole thing for my book because I saw, what, like I said, I realized that it was being out of integrity. So when you're out of integrity, mm -hmm. your self-worth goes down. And when yep. you're not feeling good about yourself, your self-worth goes down, you are going to make, you are going to self-sabotage. You are going to make, because you don't feel like you're worthy, so you're going to make lower level choices for yourself. And then your self-love diminishes, and then your integrity diminishes, and because you don't give a, you know, you don't care about yourself or you think you're a piece of dirt, you're just going to keep making low level choices. And it keeps whittling away, and it is a downward spiral that leads into a dark abyss. But on the other hand, when you claim your integrity and you start making higher level choices, mm -hmm. it's this great spiral up that you start loving yourself and feeling worthy of the good stuff. And so you're going to make a higher level choice. You're going to put yourself in a better situation. You're going to, you know, eat something that's more good, better for you. And you start like honoring yourself in a way that starts spiraling up and it's expansive. And that's what's cool that integrity leads to self-worth and self-love that leads to better choices, which leads to more self-love and greater integrity and more self-love and better choices. And it just is like, it's exponential. Woohoo! That's what's possible. <laughs> and that's what's really cool. Because we can all do it. It just starts from taking this U-turn back to ourselves. So as we're spiraling up, what's the importance then of creating a vision? The vision actually helps. It informs your choices. A vision informs your choices. Of So like when I was writing this book, and, and I say, and you want a vision of you know, this was one of my priorities and I had two priorities beyond my, you know, family and whatever, but it was writing this book and running the Ford Institute. Yeah. And so knowing that that was my due north, 
every choice I made because I had that vision, would it lead me closer to my vision? So I have friends calls me all the time. Oh, we're going to do this and, and we need you and you're so great and coming. And I love spiraling up in other people's ideas, right? But I only have certain Dutch time in the day. And so I remember with a friend, oh, and I'm going to start this, this love lab over here and we're going to do this. And we're going to do this. And I'm like, and I want you to do the shadow of love and blah, 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 blah. And, and, and I'm like, I took a deep breath. I gave myself that, you know, and I said, I can't, I can't right now because my vision is this book and the Ford Institute. So my vision informs my choices. And that's Beautiful. really cool. Debbie Ford has a whole series of questions called the right questions, and they fall right into alignment with what you're saying now. Maybe we jump into a couple. Maybe the first one is because this is informed by your decision, by your vision. Who do I want to be in this moment? I did some right questions based on that because Debbie's book, The Right Questions, is an amazing book. And for those of you who have children, I will say I started with some of those questions with my kids when they were right, when they were very young. You know, even with Ryan, is this an act of faith or is this an act of fear? Or are you looking for what's we used to do this at the dining room table. Are you looking for what's right or are you looking for what's wrong? And then I would say to, you know, how can you make what's wrong right? You mm -hmm. know, like what's the worst part of your day? How was it the best part of the day? So they could start experiencing that shift in perception. And so her book is is based on the thing, on the on the um on the concept that your life is a result of the choices that you make. And if you ask yourself the right choices, the right questions, you will make better choices. So in the book, kind of taking off on that point, I had some right questions for integrity. And one of the ones is the one that I ask myself a lot. Who do I want to be in this moment? Who do I want to be in this moment? And especially in today's world, where so much is going on and you see people, you know, having their Twitter wars and this and that, and that's great. But I'm always saying, who do I, what do I want to bring to this moment? And who do I want to be in this conversation, in this interaction, sitting next to this person on a plane? Who do I want to be in this moment? And then there's another one that seems incredibly powerful. It kind of encompasses everything we've been talking about today. What is the most loving thing I can do for myself in this moment? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I told you, I, and some days I just do this as a challenge to my, I literally pick some days and say, I'm going to let this question lead me all day. And, and I build that muscle. And literally these are the games I play with myself on a daily basis. Or like, I'm just going to have a weekend of, and I don't make any plans. And I'm just in that, like, okay, what's the most loving thing I can do right now? What's the most loving food I can put in my body? Who do I want to be with or anybody or no one? You know, what's the most loving thing? And I sometimes let that question lead me for a weekend, like a little, like I'm the, I'm the dog on the leash. <laughs> Beautiful. There's one more question that seems, they're, they're all great questions. Everybody, go out, get the Integrity Advantage. We'll give you the URL in a minute. You're going to learn so much from this, and you're going to step into your own integrity, your own authentic self, your own power. The one that, uh, uh, that really comes to mind that, that we can, well, learn <laughs> the most from in every experience is, what am I supposed to be learning from this? Yes. So I am a big believer that the universe is always giving us feedback. It's always sending us people and situations that are there for our evolution. So if something happens, I'm, or, you know, whether it's, you know, a person in my life or uh, let's take a situation, I'm all, I'm always saying, what am I supposed to be learning? You know, or if something's happening in the outer world, because I really believe my outer world is a reflection of my inner world, mm -hmm. you know, okay, if I'm experiencing chaos out there, what's chaotic in me? You know, so if I go, you know, one of those days where you miss an appointment and your phone falls in, you know, the toilet and, you know, you stub your toe and it's just chaos, chaos, chaos. I, I like stop and go, okay, I get it, universe. You're in stereo now for me. Like, what 
what is it that I need now or what do I need to handle? Because if there's chaos out there, there's chaos out here, in here. And that's what's creating it. So I am always, I'm that big believer that the universe is always giving us feedback, mm -hmm. sending us people in situations. And they're not like the people that come in our life. You know, if someone triggers you, it's not because they're there to totally piss you off and make your life terrible. It's because they show a mirror of some quality that you judge in yourself. And so you judge in them. And if you go back to wholeness, what is that quality that I need to make peace with so I can integrate it back and have access to it? Amen. So on that note, I want to take my coach's half off. I want to put it on you uh, okay. for today. And I always want to, um, I don't want people to just listen to the show without taking action. Right. What one homework assignment would you give people today? I would ask them to look at something in their life, some unfinished business, because if you're out of integrity, you're not going to let yourself have all the goodies of life and let yourself shine if we go back. So what is something that you need to do to feel better about a completion? So is there some communication that you have to make? Is there some clutter you need to clean up? Is there some bill that you've been putting off and telling yourself, oh, I'll do it tomorrow? Just look at some incompletion in your life that you need to take care of so you can set yourself free, so you can take that energy to go create something amazing. Cutting the strings. Woohoo! <laughs> what advice would you give parents to help their kids today? To really getting that transformation is a shift in perception mm -hmm. and really to have them embrace their totality. So I was with a friend of mine in New York and we went and saw his granddaughter at, um, at, in kindergarten or something. And I was so happy to see they had an emotion board and it wasn't just, you know, Sarah has a smiley face and all the kids with smiley face, whatever emotion they were feeling was welcome. And I thought, how great. And so it's really honoring your children to bring their full self, to be self-expressed, to be able to say, I'm sad, to be able to say, I'm happy, and to start getting the concept of this shift in perception. Like, okay, something, you know, like I said, you know, are you looking for what's wrong? Or are you looking for what's right? And I think parents have to take on being the change they want to see in their world and being the person that they want, you know, the role model that they want to really be. They have to walk the walk, not talk the talk. So I would say to parents, really take on being that. And that's the best role model you can do for your children is being what you hope they can be and having healthy relationships. So important. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On that note, what personally brings you the greatest happiness or what I call the woohoo factor? Beyond my children. Mm -hmm. um, it's supporting people in liberation and experiencing that in myself as well. Like I, love watching the lights go on with some, for someone and them going woohoo. And I love that too, where you just step out of some paralyzation in the, of the past or some cage of their comfort zone and just being fully expressed and, and being authentic. I love that. I love when people are authentic and real and can let their light shine or let, and that doesn't have to always mean positive. That's just being real. Like, Say, I had it to, or just allow their authentic self to come forward. And I love that for me, and I love that for others. Woo! <laughs> Where can people go to find out more and to find your beautiful book, The Integrity Advantage? 
They can go to kellycasso.com to find out about me. The Integrity Advantage is on Amazon. It's on barnesandnobles.com. But amazon.com is the, you know very easy for most people. And they can find out about the shadow process and shadow work either on kellycasso.com or on the fordinstitute.com as well. Beautiful. And Kelly, would you mind spelling that out for us? K-E-L-L-E-Y, perfect symmetry, K-O-S-O-W. So K-E-L-L-E-Y-K-O-S-O-W.com. Fantastic. And if you didn't catch that, K-E-L-L-E-Y-K-O-S-O-W.com, then come on over to inspirenationshow.com and we'll get you over to K-E-L-L-E-Y-K-O-S-O-W.com. So any last, this has been a, a brilliant interview. I loved it. It is so important. It is so, it doesn't sound, integrity, honestly, it doesn't sound like the sexiest term no. on, on uh, <laughs> no. you know, when you look it up in the yeah. English language, no. but it's probably the most important. Yes. So any last words of wisdom you want to share before we go into maybe a brief exercise? I just want people to get that struggling is optional. It really is. You don't have to there is there are venues for change and that change comes from the inside out and just start honoring yourself and and asking and building that muscle of self trust and just knowing that the universe is there to support you and find a community that's there to support you and your world can be miraculous you know, I just see like magic dancing everywhere. And I was not brought up that way. And so, you know, it really, you can have the life of your dreams. And that, I wouldn't have said that 30 years ago, 20 years ago. So, so true. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So on that note, do you have time for a brief exercise to help us out tonight? Sure. Sure. Okay, so we're going to do what I call an internal process, mm -hmm. and it really is to help you build that muscle of self-trust, so knowing that all your answers are inside of you, there's no right or wrong answers, it's just a chance to start connecting with your internal alignment monitor, so just close your eyes and take a deep breath. Unless you're driving down the road. Unless you're driving down the road, yep, yeah, absolutely, or you know, using heavy machinery. So just close your eyes and take a deep breath and just use your breath to connect with the wisdom that lives inside of you. Just affirm now that everything, every answer is inside of you. And take a deep breath. And I want you to think of something you want to manifest in your life. One thing, the relationship, the body, the career, house by the ocean, whatever it is. One thing, one vision, one, one desire you have in your life. And really see it. See what you'd be doing, what it would feel like, look like, who would be there. And as you connect to that vision, allow yourself to hear the thought that you need to let go of. The thought that keeps you away from that vision that sabotages you. What's that thought? You're not good enough. You don't deserve it. And just think about that thought. What's the thought you need to let go of? And take another breath and going deeper. What's the thought you need to affirm? What's the thought you need to affirm right now that'll support you in manifesting that desire? What's a positive thought? 
And as you hear that empowering, positive, new thought, breathe it into every cell of your body. And going deeper, allow yourself Just take a breath and acknowledge that there's some quality, some light quality that you need to own that'll support you in the manifestation of that desire. What's the positive quality you need to own? Is it your confidence, your courage, your sexiness, your desirability? What's a quality that you need to own right now? And as you hear that quality, allow yourself to hear an action step you can take this week that'll support you in truly owning this quality. What's something specific you could do this week to own that light quality? Make a commitment to yourself that you're going to do that action step. Make a commitment to yourself that you're going to actually wake up on a daily basis for the next week or so and ask yourself, what can I do to bring more whatever that quality is in my life? Every day planting another seed so that you can truly own that quality within you. And as you breathe inside, feel that quality. Feel it sinking into every cell of your body. Take another breath and ask yourself, what would be possible if I truly own that quality? What would be different in my life? What would be different in the people or for the people around me? What would be different in the world if I truly own that I am that? Just see what would be possible, what would be different. And just breathe into that possibility, knowing that it's already so. It wouldn't be your dream, your quality, your possibility if it wasn't already there. And thank yourself for having the courage to look and awaken that quality inside of you again, to awaken that desire. And take another breath. And when you're ready, open your eyes, claiming, I am that. I am that. Woohoo! <laughs> Thank you so, so, so much, Kelly. This was truly brilliant. Thank you. You are inspiring. <laughs> from the yellow glasses on and to the <laughs> flamingos in the background oh we've got to have fun <laughs> you are amazing thank you thank you so so much so for everyone out there this is michael sandler saying be well have fun get the integrity advantage and begin claiming your magnificence today and shine bright Woohoo! thank you so so much kelly Thank you. You're wonderful. And thank you for reading it. <laughs> a lot of people don't. So it's very different to have someone who's read it. Apparently that's my claim for me. claim for fame is I actually read the books. You read it. I'm, I'm going like, to interview you on. He read it. Oh my god. <laughs> like this is Halloween definitely a trick. <laughs> I I put it this way. If you went through the trouble to write the book, I should at least go through the trouble of reading it. Oh, I love it. <laughs>
And it is such a beautiful, such an important, such a life-saving book. Literally. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like, like below. Also, leave your comments. Have some real fun with it. Subscribe to our channel where you're going to get more great videos, more interviews coming up. And check out our website, inspirenationshow.com. That's where you'll find tips, blogs, information, videos you won't find anywhere else, and useful and helpful resources to really help you kickstart your life and to shine bright. Thanks so much again. Thank you for your support. Like, 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 comment, subscribe. See the website. Thanks so much and have fun. Of course, shine bright. Woohoo! <laughs>